the um, <sighs> clear blue water or the clear red water is 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 there for everyone to see. Let me be very clear. With Labour, Britain will not go back into the EU. We will not be joining the single market. We will not be joining a customs union. And Sadiq Khan, currently the most powerful Labour politician in the country, says the exact opposite in a way. He says pretty simply that we need to have a pragmatic debate about the benefits of being a part of the customs union and the single market, a debate in which he would very much um, argue that we should and we must. And I, I mean financially statistically economically he's just right he, he is i mean he is just right it has done on 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 immeasurable damage to anybody who who understands anything will acknowledge that other things have also damaged us not all our problems in this country lie at the feet of brexit and there are plenty of problems in the countries that are still in the european union but it's a bit like thinking that a bath is either overflowing or empty you know, if you run a bath, then the, the, the level of water in it is variable. So some of the problems we have, if, if you think of water as problems, if we hadn't Brexited, the bath would not be empty. There would still be water in it, but it wouldn't be close to overflowing. And, and the countries that are still in the European Union, they've got problems in their territories. They've got water in their bath, but it's not as high as it would be if they weren't in the European Union. Even if the water in their bath was higher than the water in our bath... That wouldn't prove that leaving the European Union was a good idea because, as we have discovered since we left, that countries still have enormous variables and differences. They're not part of some homogenous, amorphous blob that, 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 that means every country is exactly the same. They still have water in their bath, more water than we've got. But our water would be even lower if we hadn't left the Euro... Is this working, this bath timer? Is anyone following this? Where's the rubber duck, Keith wants to know? I don't know where the rubber duck is. I'm just I'm looking for my flannel. Where's the soap? No, we won't do that old joke. Uh, 12 minutes after 11 is the time. So in, in, in the red corner, Keir Starmer, and in the red corner, Sadiq Khan. This is actually quite an interesting moment in post-Brexit British politics. How do we make it interesting for us? I, 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 I do miss the day. I don't miss the days when Brexiters would ring in and, and, and just have a nightmare on, on the show. I loved it at the time. It, it did, obviously, immeasurable benefit to my career. Uh, for, 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 and that does matter to me. I don't expect it to matter to you. I wouldn't. I certainly wouldn't be writing my third book um, at the moment if it wasn't for the, what would we say, the attention that I drew when, when, when those clips of me talking to Brexiters started going viral everywhere. Um, but I don't, I don't miss that. I don't miss that. Because now I, it, it, the battle is lost. So when you thought there was still a chance of turning the oil, oil tanker around, I don't think I've ever explained this to you, so hopefully you'll indulge me for a minute. So when there was still a chance of turning the oil tanker around, someone ringing in who was passionately allied to keeping the oil tanker on the course it was currently on, if, if I would pull their pants down in public and turn them into an absolute jib, gibbering jelly of a laughing stock, I did enjoy that. I, I, I mean, you could tell I enjoyed it because I thought that there was still a chance of turning the oil tanker around. I thought there was still a chance of a second referendum. I thought the old adage, measure twice, cut once, still had a chance of kicking in. I agreed probably for the first and only time in my life with Jacob Rees-Mogg that we should have two referendums, one on leaving in, 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 in principle and one on leaving when we had a much clearer idea of what it would look like. But that battle is lost. That battle was lost. There is a new battle now to hopefully accelerate the inevitable process of rejoining. But I don't enjoy, I, I, I don't miss the humiliation of people who'd been criminally misled by people like Jacob Rees-Mogg. I don't, I don't derive any pleasure from that because it's not me really that's humiliating you. It's him. It's, it's Boris Johnson and Nadine Dorries and Daniel Hannan and Andrew Bridgen, and that they are the people that turned you into someone who could be so easily humiliated on, on national radio. Not me. I didn't turn you into that person. They did. And so I, 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 you know, I look forward to the day when you blame them for what was done to you rather than, rather than me. But I do miss talking to people who have open minds on this issue. I do miss talking about Brexit because it is such a huge um it's such a huge issue it's it's generational it's epochal uh, you know the full cost of it is not going to be counted for for generations 
and and yet we are still as a country in this appalling limbo this this appalling limbo where I'm gonna, I nick this off Ollie actually in Oxford and I wasn't going to credit him because it's so good but the the superstition is that if a leader of the Conservative or the Labour Party say Brexit in the media three times Nigel Farage will appear with a pint in one hand and a cigarette in the other that's the fear, you, you, you know. That's, that's it, and and it's a, it's a valid fear. He'll come along with his lies and his and his demagoguery and his jingoism and his xenophobia, and it will uh, entice or hypnotise enough people to make an electoral difference to the Conservative Party and and their electoral prospects. Sixteen minutes after eleven is the time. I want to know. I, I'd like to ask you quite a tricky question. All right, and I haven't got an answer to it at the moment and this is possibly the first time we've had a brexit phone in where i'm not laying down the law and getting out my coconuts and inviting you to lob balls at them i i because the you know i i i and, and it's a bit cheeky to begin on the premise that we are going to have to have this debate so that could be point number one for you to ring in, where you'll say, we never need to have this debate. We never need to talk about joining the customs union or the single market again. But I, with respect, I think that means you're probably still a little bit engulfed in a cult. You're still being a bit silly. Sadiq Khan's just right. We will have to, at some point, move closer to the biggest trading block in the world, which is so near to us you can swim to it. We will just have to. But I wonder when you think that will be. So Keir Starmer is adamant that that day will never dawn. We will never go back. We will never join the single market. We will jo never join a customs union. I do wonder whether with Boris Johnson out of Downing Street, that um, that gambit looks silly. I think with Boris Johnson in Downing Street and his ability to inflate Brexit balloons of baloney as if, you know, as if it was going out of fashion meant that Starmer had to take that position. With Rishi Sunak in Downing Street, I'm not so sure, but he can't back down now. This is entirely my speculation. I, I've only ever spoken to Keir Starmer on stage at the Leicester Square Theatre this time last year. But the, the, the calculation with Johnson in the driving seat would be he'd just continue telling new lies, old lies, um, uh, uh, fresh lies, stale lies, any lies at all you want about, and you just continue telling them again and again and again and again and again. And Starmer doesn't have the pins that are needed to burst those balloons. I'm not sure anybody does because Johnson's ability to inflate balloons of Brexit bloviation is absolutely epic, truly epic. But I, I do wonder whether if Starmer had known that Sunak was going to be in Downing Street by January of this year, he would have gone all in on it. But go all in on it, he has. And Sadiq Khan has now drawn a line in the sand and said, no, we are going to have to have this debate. We're going to have to talk honestly and openly about Brexit so that the negative impacts can be addressed as much as possible. And there it is. We will have to talk honestly and openly about Brexit so that the negative impacts can be addressed as much as possible. Now, people like the ones I mentioned, the the the, the Reese Moggs and the Johnsons and the Hanans, although Hanan, I, I don't think, I, I'm told he's not doing any broadcast. You ring him up, it might just be because it was someone who works with me, but you ring up Daniel Hanan now and ask him to appear on a program and he says no. At one point, you couldn't turn your television or your radio on without seeing his... Um, sort of Uriah Heepish fizzog peering out at you from the television screen. And, and of course, they all still write their ludicrous articles for the Daily Telegraph comment pages, but none of them will admit that there have been any negative impacts. So maybe that's part of the answer to the question. Why? Well, when will this debate happen, do you think? <laughs>